Hi, welcome back to the workshop for episode five of the Micawba Telecaster build. And as you've just seen, you join us this episode for body preparation and finishing. So since I left you last time, I've probably done about three hours sanding on the body. I started out with 120 grit, got it all flatted down and smooth from that, and then just worked my way through a few more grits just to take out the sanding marks. So as you'll see in the next few minutes of video, we've got the body very nice now and it's ready to move on with the next stages of finishing. Okay, so I've been through the grades with this now um, and I've rubbed it down to 220 grit. So I've started out at 120, worked my way up through 150, 180, finally 220. Um, and it is feeling really, really nice and smooth. The trick of ironing it raised all the grain. So now once that's raised, I'm actually flatting back to a, a level surface and it's really kind of smoothed down beautifully. So I'm really, really happy with that. So the next job is to get some grain filler on, um, but I don't want to fill up all these little holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a cocktail stick into them and just trim that off a little bit above the surface. And that way, they're not going to get blocked up and I'm not going to have to re-drill them or anything. Okay, so with that done, time to have a quick clean up. And get some grain filler mixed up. So if you've seen me finishing a guitar before, you'll know how I go about this. And I just use this joint filling compound as a pour filler. Um, works really, really well, and it's very, very cheap. So what's not to love? And this simply mixes up with a little bit of water into a nice smooth paste. A little bit too wet. And then we simply just spread this on. I'm just using a, a plastic spreader. Now you can color this quite easily with water-based color or stain. But on this particular guitar, I'm just going to leave it white. And it will just give the the grain a nice white appearance.
Okay, so that's all nicely covered now. Um, and I'll leave that overnight to dry up. Now it might seem a little strange to use white pore filler on this. Um, but what we need to remember is back in the 50s when they built these Telecasters, they were built as limed ash. And that would have been a kind of translucent white finish. And it's only the action of the nitro lacquer yellowing over the years that gives them the butterscotch appearance. Of course, these days that's painted in that colour to give the appearance of the aged look. But back when they were built, they would have been a very white guitar. So that's why I'm using the white grain filler. Okay, so this has been left overnight um, and it's all dried off really, really nicely. It looks an absolute state, um, but with a quick rub down, it'll be fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get these little plugs out. And I'm simply just going to get some sandpaper on the job and get this rubbed off. So this is all sanded down to 320 grit now and that gives a really nice balance of smoothness with a key for your paint. So you don't really need to go any further than that. So next thing I'm going to do is break the airline out, get the blowgun and give this a good clean out with that just to get rid of any dust that might be lurking in the cavities etc. And then we can get it attached to its paint stick and look to get some paint on this thing. Okay, so there it is mounted on the paint stick, ready to go. Um, as you probably saw there, even though we thought this was clean, um, there was a fair amount of dust lurking in the cavities. So we've got all that out now, so it's not gonna get blown out when we start painting. So there's nothing left for it now, but to have a quick clean up in the workshop, get some polythene over all the stuff I don't want painting, and we'll get some paint onto it. Okay, so we're pretty set up, ready to go now. Um, so yesterday, while I was getting ready for all of this, um, I did a little bit of a sample. Um, so what I've done is I've given it one coat at this end, masked it off, given it two coats, masked it off, given it three coats, done it again, given it four coats. So basically, from there, I've been able to have a chat with the customer and kind of look at it myself and establish what I think is the best level of kind of color to give this body. Now it's a bit difficult to see in the camera um, because it is a very subtle difference. Um, but I'm thinking somewhere around about two and a half coats according to this. So I'm gonna give it two coats, see what it looks like, and then take it from there. If it looks okay, 
I'll then clear coat it. If I think it's looking a bit pale, I'll give it another coat. Um, it is worth bearing in mind, and I've checked this, I've looked this up on kind of as many internet sources as I can. So Macorba, the guitar work, you know, kind of replicating to some extent here, um, is actually quite pale for a 50s black guard. Um, some of them you see, they're very, very dark yellow. They've aged quite a lot. Um, I'm thinking because it's Keith Richards' guitar, it probably hasn't seen the light of day in a long time. So it is still quite a pale one. So this is why I'm thinking more towards the light end of the scale. Right, let's get some paint mixed up and get it on the body. Okay, so a few things before I, I start painting. Um, in terms of the paint, um, it's nitro, nitrocellulose, um, and this comes from Northwest Guitars here in the UK, and it's their version of Butterscotch Blonde. Um, I actually think it looks quite nice, it looks quite authentic. Uh, so for the first couple of coats, I've mixed it down about 25% thinners, perhaps a little bit more. Um, I'll give it a coat at that, see how it looks. Um, as I'm only going to be putting two or three coats on, I'll probably leave it at that ratio. But when I'm putting the clear coats on afterwards, I'll thin the final coats of that right down. Um, so I'll get a nice, fine, shiny finish without having to do too much rubbing down. I'm using, it's a very cheap but effective HVLP gun that I got off Amazon. Um, it was very cheap. I think it was less than £20. This will be the third guitar I've done with it and I've had two outstanding finishes so far. So very happy with that. Proof that you don't have to spend a huge amount of money on this equipment if you don't want to. And the other thing is, if you're using these paint finishes, always, always wear a mask at all times. So I'm in a small workshop. So from the second I start, painting this, I'll wear my mask, I'll wear my mask as I leave the workshop and I'll put it back on before I come back in. Once I've finished painting, I will then leave the door open in the workshop for a good few hours just to get all the fumes and everything out. Always look after yourself, you only get one set of lungs. Okay, nothing for it now, to get some paint on the job.
Okay, so that's the colour coats on. Um, I've left this overnight and I've just been over it and denibbed it with a 500 grit pad. Um, so it's nice and smooth. So now it's just a case of doing the same process with about four or five coats of clear. Okay, so that's the last of the lacquer coats on. Um, that's been on probably two hours now and it's starting to dry up really nicely. It's obviously going to take a lot longer to fully harden up. Um, but this is pretty much the last work we need to do on the body for the time being. So I'm going to put that to one side in the workshop now, probably leave it for about four or five days until it's a little bit less stinky. Um, and then I can move it inside where it's a bit warmer and that can start its curing process. I would say we're probably looking at maybe three or four weeks to get it properly cured to the point where we can get it rubbed down. But that can only really mean one thing. It's time to make a start on the neck. But that's something I'm gonna leave for the next time. Um, I'm really pleased with the way this paint job's come out. I've got the color I wanted um, without obscuring the grain on the body too much. And I hope this has been useful information to anyone out there thinking of doing a similar thing. If so, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.